morning, everyone. Mike Vaki, PrincetonTrader.com, here for NTMarkets.com with your Monday morning pre-market webcast. Okay, S&P 500, uh, E-mini futures, daily chart. Uh, remember, we're now on the December contract as the front month. Uh, we traded, we opened up last night as low as 68. We're now, uh, we're now trading 74 half. We've traded as high as 76, 75. And what I told my subscribers last night on the, on on their evening subscriber webcast when we were trading down 68, 69, is that typically what you see on the Sunday night gap down opens is some retracement over the course of the night. The last thing you want to do, well, the second to the last thing you want to do is dump an adverse position on Sunday night, if, especially if it's a long, because it tends to come back. At least it has during the course of this uptrend. The last thing you want to do on a Sunday night is short in the hole, because I guarantee you there will be pain for you when you get out of bed the next morning. And, you know, it, it, very typically, if you if you turned your computer on last night and you went, whoa, we're going down, this is it, I got to get in short, and you shorted 68, 69, 69 half, you're not having a good morning. Don't short in the hole. It's one of our number one rules. Don't short in the hole. During the last two years, Shorting in the hole has done nothing but get, you know, just get people crushed on the short side. So, um, where do we go from here? Well, you see the lower Bollinger Band, which is the beige line here. We've made a reaction below that. This is the continuation chart. And the lower band now is trying to act as resistance. If the lower band does act as resistance, then we should get a lower high in order to set up a short uh, for a push lower and if you know and the Bollinger Bands are tight enough to expand and permit a lower Bollinger Band ride so we've really got to be aware uh, people have to be careful with their longs today because if it begins to turn to the downside it can run for a few days the bears are positioned fairly well if you look at the December contract in and of itself you see a little bit of a different story there you see a move below the lower band and then a rejection back up off of the band so there's a little bit of a contradiction between the continuation chart and the front month chart what I will tell you is that over the last year and a half or so the continuation bands have been far more accurate than the front month bands a lot of people may say that's counterintuitive and it may be but it has played out from a trading standpoint time and again so even though we have pushed below and made it back up above the lower band on the December contract, I remain very concerned with the lower band in the continuation contract going resistance. So, um, and if, if, it, if it stays resistance, we'll be exiting our longs that have been coming back overnight. And then, you know, if... If the bears do have some push, if they can press this advantage that they must press, uh, then we would set something up from the short side. So it's it's kind of an interesting morning. It's kind of a pivotal point. It's an area where the bears, you know, did something they really haven't been able to do lately. I mean, we had three days here of an inability to close below the middle band. That was turned around on Friday with a move below, okay? And the bears are trying to follow through, something the bears have really been unable to do for a couple of years. You have to respect the, the expansion argument because really the only time that the bears have been able to move this market lower, let me zoom out here, are on expansion trades out of contraction. There's one here and another one we just did here. So if we start to move lower, you have to respect that. And those always tend to run farther than you think they will. So it's not a day, you know, if, if we start to expand to the downside, it's not a time to be, you know, coming in there and buying a dip every other handle. Um, because you could find yourself in the middle of a four to five, you know, day band ride until this Bollinger bandwidth, which is 1.81 this morning, recovers to about five. So it's a it's a it, it is a 
compression that's kind of snuck up on us because just you know just a week ago we had uh, Bollinger uh, bandwidth up above six, but all this flattening that occurred uh, uh, is starting to catch up uh, with the bands. Okay, so everybody have a fantastic day. Follow us on Twitter at Princeton Trader. Come check out the website, PrincetonTrader.com. Come check out the chat room. Come sign up for a trial. We would love to meet you. I'll be back tomorrow morning with another webcast. Trade them well.